Good afternoon, good afternoon. I pray that I bless you this week. I pray God bless you and your family with his richest blessing. I thank God for how he blessed me. I can't say enough. How God keeps on looking away from me. Time after time after time after time. Even though I'm not right, He still takes time to do me. To do to, 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 to do some good in my life. Let me, let me know that he's there. And all this month comes the benefit of being obedient. The benefit of obedience. Now this next lesson, this last lesson of the month, is called Obedience and Respect. You know, when a judge comes in the courtroom, Y'all stand to give him respect. When a policeman or a policewoman comes to our car, we give them the respect that they are that they are due because they can respect our lives in a great way. Well, I say that God can affect our lives also in a great way too. But the question is, do we give him the respect and the honor that he's due? Do we say, it's just God. I just do me. I do me. Now, in the background for the lesson, God's people left Egypt. God is fed them with bread from heaven and the water from a rock. Brought them across the Red Sea. Been good to them. Now they come to Mount Sinai and God, and God comes down to visit them. Now that was now that was some criteria for God for God for God to visit them. You go in the courtroom. There are some rules that are there's some rules that you must follow. When you stop by police, there are some rules that you must follow. When you deal with your parents, sometimes there are some rules you must follow. So, the children of Israel had to show God the respect and the honor that he was doing. See, God knew that they were going to a land that was flashy, that could draw them away from him. He was trying to set a standard with them. So the foundation a foundation that they would trust him at all costs. A foundation that they would let nothing separate them from the love of God. God was setting the foundation with the children of Israel. And Moses brought him to, to the bottom of Mount Sinai. There was smoke and fire descending and ascending like a furnace. That's God's power, y'all.
and then God was like a God was like a loud trumpet. It was loud. It was powerful. And then Moses answered God. By his voice. When God calls out to him, do we answer him? Do we have SHL, which is selected him? That means we hear what we want to hear. I've had SHL in the past. I've had Slater Hill off the God in the past. And that has got me nowhere but trouble. No more about heart and pain. See, for me, it, it, it doesn't pay. To not heed God. In chapter 20, in verse 20 of chapter 19 of Exodus, it says, The Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. On the top of the mountain. And the Lord called the Moses. The Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain. And Moses went up. You see. Moses, he didn't, Moses listened to God. God said, come up. I want to meet with you. I want to talk to you. I know that you are leading the people, but I want you to come up and and meet with me and get my plan. We consult God on our plan. Do we take the time? To see what God is saying to us. Do we not hear them? Because it's not what we want to hear. In verse 23, in verse 23 of 19, chapter 19, it says, said, But Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to the mountain, Sinai. For you have warned us, saying, Set boundaries around the mountain and consecrate it. You see, Moses followed God's instruction. God told Moses, that only he could, only he could come with them. Not the priest, not the people, not the ones that um not the judges they put in place. He reminded God of this. When God knew this. God said, Moses, you come up. And in verse 25, Moses came down and told people what God said. Now in the next chapter, we'll see Moses getting the Ten Commandments. And coming down and seeing the people doing all kinds of stuff. See, God was setting a precedent in God was setting the stage in chapter 19. God was saying, I am the supreme. 
I'm your supreme physician. I brought you out of Egypt. I fed you with bread, gave you water, brought across the Red Sea. Just look at my track record. If we want to look at God's track record in our lives, that time that car wreck and that car was crushed like a king, and we came out one scratch. Mm. The time of doctor said, you have cancer. But you went back. Go. When your mama, daddy, and auntie, and uncle said, you ain't going to be nothing in the world. But God said, you're going to be something. And now you're successful. God has proven himself time and time and time again in our lives. Do we see? Do we see God working our lives? The people didn't see it. Because they were looking at what they didn't have. Some of them said, either we, we had food, we had food to stay. We had a good, we had a good, we had a good eating. But they forgot about the hard labor. They forgot, they, they forgot about the, the beating. To only take the time to really look at, to really look at the situation and see, and see what's going on. See how God is working, see how, see how God is moving our lives. We'll be much better off. It may seem hard now, but just hold on to God and change the hand. And I guarantee everything going to be all right. You're going to come through this test, this trial, this situation. Because the people in the desert, the dry place. But God was still providing for them. Even though even though they, they were in the wilderness, the desert, God was still providing for them. You may be in a bad place, you may be in a dry place, but God is still providing for you. I have been from dropping. I've been. I've been from this. I've been to. I've been from dropping in my life. And God has brought me through every one of them. I didn't see at a time when I came through. When I look back at the when I look back at that experience, I say, "Look here, others around me they were losing their jobs, they were losing their houses, losing their cars, but I kept mine." All because God was providing for me. God provides for you and me. If we trust him at all costs. We give respect to the judges. To our parents. To the police, to others. And what they can do for us is only temporary, it's a little bit. But let's give respect to the God who can make our lives a whole lot better. Let's give total respect to Him. Let's give Him reverence. If someone will give you a million dollars right right now, you will say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But what God gives us is greater than money, than houses, or cars, or land. What God gives us will be with us even even when we didn't go. What God gives us as a lifetime, even after them. I 
I know this is not a a, a word that's gonna blow your mind. This is not a word that excited us at this time to you. But it needs to be taught. We give respect to everybody else but God. When God fought us from the dust of earth and blew his first life in the earth. When God is the one who's been protecting you and I all our lives. Let's give God the respect that he's due. Let's serve God with a cheerful, joyful attitude. God is so good to me and you, I can't express it. He loved us so much to he put it in his own son, to this sin cursed world. To die on the cross for our sins. We were hard headed children, y'all. We were baby kids. But yet still, God gave his only son to die for us. Now that's love, y'all. That's love. It's this better than love between a wife and a husband. A mom and a child, best friend love, God's love is so great. The question is, do we get the same love back to God? If we don't, we should start right now. And let's trust God at all costs. Trust God at all costs. When you trust God at all costs, you give him the respect and the reverence that he's due. You will you will follow his word for your obedience to what he says do. When you trust God at all costs. And I invite you today to get to know this man called Jesus, Jesus Christ. I invite you to let him in your heart, mind, body, and soul. He'll come in and make your life brand new. Come unto Jesus while you have time. He will make your life brand new. For he will take care of you. Come unto Jesus while you have time. If you want to come into your heart, come and come and come, come to your heart, mind, body, and soul. Just say this little prayer. And he'll come in and set things straight. Now, I warn you now, he, 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 may, he may remove some things that you'll enjoy doing. He may remove it. He may, he may, he may, get, he may, he may even put some things in that you think you'll need. But, but trust him at all costs. If you want Jesus to come into your mind, body, and soul, just say his prayer. Say, Lord, I come before you today, giving my total self to you. I admit I'm a sinner. I admit that I have went against your way. Lord, thank you for loving me so much that you sacrificed your own body to save me. At this moment and forevermore, I will let you have full control of my life. 
I will trust you, Don. I pray for you in the name of Christ. Amen. If you said this prayer, you are saved. Now find a Bible-based, Christ-centered church to go to. A church that is teaching God's word. He said, follow the ordinance and the rules of God. Woo! God is so good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And know that you're going to mess up. You're going to mess up sometimes. When you mess up, say, God, I messed up. I'm sorry. I'm asking for your forgiveness. So we keep our minds staying on God. Stay in His Word. And pray to God. And spend time with God. We will be just fine. We follow God's will for our lives. We'll be just fine. Whew. I tell y'all, disobedience can cause you a lot of pain and heartache. Remember, let's give God the respect that he do. Let's give God the respect and honor that he do. And let's trust him at all costs. Let's trust him at all costs. Go with God all the way and not halfway. Go with God all the way and not halfway. Have a great day. May God bless you this week. I admonish both me and you to, to, to start our day and end our day with talking to God.